done. All right, boys and girls, and we are ready to begin for night three of our read aloud with Dr. Ivy. I am so glad that you are with us uh, tonight. Um, just to give you a uh, just a couple of introductory uh, comments, um, what we're going to do uh, tonight, as I get a little bit more situated here uh, with our read aloud, <laughs> monitor and adjust, right? And so, uh, just to kind of give you a heads up on how things are going to go tonight. Uh, if you are just joining us, uh, I'm excited that you are here. Uh, my name is Trevor Ivey, and I'm a local educator uh, here in Sumter County. And uh, for the last three nights, um, we have been doing a nightly read aloud. Um, and really, this kind of uh, came out about of what's happening uh, with the situation that we're involved in locally. Uh, we're on the third day of no school. And I have just been really super impressed with all of the local educators that have just really stepped up uh, to really redesign uh, teaching and learning experiences for our children. And I figured that um, I should kind of uh, step up to the plate as well, since everyone else is stepping out of their comfort zone uh, to do something as well. So welcome to night three of our Read Aloud with Dr. Ivy, that's me. Uh, we are going to get started. Uh, our get started activity, uh, if you're just now joining us, uh, was to comment in the thread, uh, the live thread, uh, your name and location if you're comfortable sharing that, but also to think back to last night's read aloud, which was, uh, if I built a house. So think back to the book that we read last night for our get started activity, and you'll recall the main character whose name was Jack. And Jack had this idea to build the most exciting house ever. And in his house, uh, he had some special designs. And so what I want you to be thinking about and comment in the thread is uh, what was your favorite part of Jack's house? So be thinking about that. What was your favorite part of Jack's house? So mom, dad, uh, older sibling, whoever is uh, with you, if you'll comment that into the thread, we're going to come back to that a little later in our activity tonight. Uh, so uh, just to kind of take you back to uh, where we were last night, uh, we are going to launch our lesson. Uh, we have three parts tonight to our activity. We have the launch, uh, and then we have a learn component, and then we have a land component. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the launch component of tonight's Read Aloud, uh, which is to revisit what our challenge was from last night. So if you remember, at the very end of our time together last night, uh, you were challenged to look at the engineering design process to build a house or some sort of contraption, uh, some sort of snare, uh, to capture a leprechaun. And if you see, that's why I still have on my green hat, because even though it's not St. Patrick's Day, I am still celebrating St. Patrick's Day uh, today with our nightly read aloud. And so you were challenged to think about how to solve a particular problem. And your problem was to save our two uh, little tiny leprechauns. And if you were a boy, uh, you were supposed to trap uh, clover. <laughs> and if you are a young lady, you were supposed to trap McWiggles. And so using this special tool called the engineering design process, you had a problem and you were challenged to plan your solution and to make your model. And boys and girls, I was super impressed with uh, a lot of the uh, models and videos that I received uh, in the last 24 hours since we launched our challenge. And I was so excited uh, that I couldn't pick a winner. And so that is why I posted on our page, my Facebook page, uh, for you to vote. Uh, so with your second uh, internet connected device, you're gonna need that tonight along with some markers. You got your markers. And you'll also need a blank sheet of paper. So those are our three materials tonight. So if you don't have those materials handy, 
Uh, maybe someone near you can go and get those. Uh, but what I need your help with to get started is using your second internet connected device. If you'll go back on the page and, and you will find the pictures and the videos that I posted of our, um, our nine entries. We had nine models that were submitted. We actually just had a model that was submitted in the last uh, uh, 20 minutes and so I quickly posted that and so what I want you to do uh, really quickly is to dad an older sibling whoever is with uh, your child and uh, we call them scholars in our nightly read alouds take just a moment to look at those models and I want you to go ahead and pick your favorite your favorite model should answer the design principle that was uh, laid out last night in our challenge so just to remind you, it was supposed to be creative, but most importantly, it was supposed to follow the principles of the engineering design process. And remember, bonus points were given if a scholar created a video. So take uh, another moment to go back on the page and quickly vote uh, for uh, your favorite. And if you're like me, uh, you may have had uh, multiple favorites, and, and so uh, you might want to vote for all of them. So I'll give you just a quick minute to go back in and vote for your favorite. Use this as a moment to debrief from last night's activity as we get started and leave our launch segment and go into the learn segment. Take another moment. So just to show you visuals of our entries that we did receive for the models, uh, again, we had, uh, I believe, nine all together. Uh, so I'm going to show you pictures just in case you don't have a second internet connected device. Perhaps you can comment in the thread uh, below who is your selection because I'll need some help because I have a special prize for our uh, winning model. Uh, and if you don't believe me about a prize, just ask Team Sylvia from last night who won our assessment challenge at the end of our nightly read aloud and they received some school supply money. All right, so here is model number one. Model number uh, So I'll give you just a moment to look at Michael's. Um, right. Model number two is Cameron. Look at Cameron's model. Model number three, uh, which actually was a video submission, was from Carisi. We had another model that was sent in by Anthony to trap his leprechaun, who would be McClover. Another model that was sent in was from Brandon. Here is Brandon's. He also attempted to trap McClover. But check out Emma Kate's leprechaun trap. Check this one out. She was trying to trap McWiggles. We also had a preschool scholar participate. Uh, check out Olivia, Olivia's trap, as she attempted to save McWiggles. And what I thought was uh, most uh, enlightening as an educator, uh, this is something we live for as educators, is when parents become involved in the process. And so we had a parent that uh, participated in the design challenge, and this is Michelle. Michelle wanted to share her leprechaun trap uh, to try and trap McWiggles. Uh, so you have all of our uh, ones uh, that were submitted that I was able to print. Um, but again, we did have a submission just in the last 30 minutes that I did post. Uh, and you will find Randy's. Uh, Randy, his model is posted on my page. So take a moment if you haven't done so and go ahead and vote because I'll need your help. I'll need your help.
All right, and I think we're ready to move into the learn component of our time together. And our learn component takes us back to our read aloud. So as I shared with you, boys and girls, uh, I am still celebrating St. Patrick's Day, and I thought that it would be pretty cool uh, to give you the design challenge last night to build your leprechaun trap, but then to also uh, use tonight's read aloud to actually go over a great book with you that is titled How to Trap a Leprechaun. So let's find out about this book, How to Trap a Leprechaun. Remember, boys and girls, we have some names on the front cover of the book. And on the front cover of the book, tonight, we have two names. So it's a little different than last night, where we only had one name. But tonight, we have two. And so our two names that we have tonight, it says, written by Sue Fleece and illustrated by Emma Randall. So boys and girls, think again. What do we call that person who writes the book? I can't hear you. Did you put it in the comment section? Did you tell your parent or whomever is sitting next to you, maybe your fuzzy friend? That's right, we call them the author. The other person that is noted on our title page is the illustrator. Now, what does the illustrator do? Hmm, what does that illustrator do? You're right, and the illustrator is the person who draws the pictures. So now that we know the title of our book, the author and the illustrator, good readers always take just a moment to look at the book and do something called a picture walk to make sure that this is a book that they will want to read. Because you don't want to get a book that is and this looks like a great book for me to read tonight. So I am going to go ahead and begin reading it with all the boys and girls out there who are joining in on our nightly read aloud. Hmm, let's find out what's going to happen. I wonder what predictions you might be making about what's going to happen. What do you predict is going to happen? You see all sorts of little people on the front cover we know there's an illustrator involved, so we must call this person, uh, or excuse me, we must classify this book as a fiction book because it will give us made up information. So let's find out about our book. Legend tales of tiny little people called elves who visit once a year. They'll steal your treasures for themselves, then quickly disappear. What do they call those people? Elves. If you catch this little elf called a leprechaun, he'll grant a wish, I'm told. But if he gets away, too bad. No wish, no luck, no gold. Poof! He disappears. Hmm. They're small and full of trickery. They'll fool you if they can. Catching one takes smarts and skill, but most of all, you have to have a plan. Oh, there's that word plan again. I wonder if they're going to use the plan that we learned about last time. That's right, the engineering design process. The night before St. Patrick's Day, the leprechauns appear. If you wish to capture one, you gear. Hmm, gear. I wonder what kind of gear. First, you'll need to build a trap, one that he can't escape. So grab a box, grab a bottle cap, grab some glitter, grab some glue, and make sure to grab some tape. Wow, 
Gotta have a lot of materials to catch a leprechaun. You'll want to use gold paint to coat the rocks so the leprechaun will think they're real. Look at them coating the rocks. Scatter them inside the box and he will come to steal. Pour some glue inside the box and build a rainbow slide. Wow, into the box. He'll take a ride to find the gold, but find he's stuck inside. My goodness. You see what they're using the glue for? I wonder if the leprechaun is gonna get stuck. Only one way to find out. We have to keep reading. But you see, leprechauns only come out at night so they can sneak around. Look at how the author turns everything dark to show us, the reader, that leprechauns only come out at night. Mm. Are those boys and girls sleeping? No. They are standing far away, trying to see if they can see the leprechaun. Now close the drapes and dim the light and wait without a sound. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Quickly check your snare. Ooh, that's a new word. What's a snare? Hmm, it's another word for the trap. Let's go check the snare. Shucks, he just escaped the trap. He could be anywhere. Poof, he disappeared. Look at this. Look at what he left in his shoe. He left a note. I wonder what the note says. Tiny words addressed to you and this is what he wrote. Oh my goodness, boys and girls. I wonder what the leprechaun wrote. He left it in a shoe. He must have wanted to make sure they found it. The note says... Dear children, thanks for the glitter and the shiny gold rocks, but I can't be trapped by a cardboard box. Your tricks were quite clever. Your trap was so great, but it takes more than rainbows to seal my fate. Signed, Liam the Leprechaun. Oh, it's a shame he got away. But please don't shed a tear. Are those boys and girls happy right now? Are they? No. On their faces. I wonder why they're sad. Why are they sad? That's right. They didn't catch Liam the Leprechaun. Go enjoy St. Patrick's Day and you can try again next year. So look at those boys and girls going off and enjoying their St. Patrick's Day, all dressed in green. Remember, we learned to wear green so you don't get any pinches. The end. So that was a great book, boys and girls. I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed it. And so now I am going to test your knowledge. And we are still in our learn uh, component of tonight's read aloud. And we are going to, at this time, get our second internet connected device. If you have one, an iPad, another iPhone, or if you have your blank sheet of paper, uh, you can do again, just like we did last night, uh, for our assessment game. And so you guessed it. 
we are going to play another game of Kahoot. And, but I promise you, boys and girls, and I am learned from last night and, uh, that you cannot actually see the answer choices written. So I will kind of guide you through them uh, so we can find out who is going to win. So once you go to a new browser, you're going to go to Kahoot.it. Again, that's Kahoot.it. And our code for tonight is 5514272. I'll say that again. It's 5514272. Right, JG is on the board. Again, our code is 5514272. All right, the berries are logged in. Ansley, welcome back. Brandon and Sylvia, good to see you again. Autumn P, thanks for joining. K, thank you for joining in. Again, the code is 5514272. All right, Delena, you are logged in. I think I also see Randy. Thank you, Randy. You are logged in. The code again, 5514272. Five five one four two seven two. All right, we have another Brandon that is logged in. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. And remember, you press the shape. What was the name of the leprechaun in tonight's book, Who Escaped? Is it Triangle, McWiggles, Rumbus, or Diamond for McClover, Circle for Liam, or a Square for McShady? All right, Liam. Liam is the name of the leprechaun. Excellent job. All right, Randy, you are in the lead on the board. All right, the leprechaun in tonight's book left behind a note. Where did he leave it? Triangle on the table in the kitchen, diamond in his shoe, circle on the bathroom sink, or square on the chair? Where did he leave it? All right, that's right. And he left it in his shoe. That was the diamond in his shoe. All right, Randy, still in the lead. Next question, what is the meaning of the word snare in tonight's book? Is it triangle, delicious food, diamond, a slide, circle, gold, or square? The word snare, what does it mean? Hmm. Ooh, that's one that we need to look at again. Boys and girls, the word snare is a uh, fancy word for a trap. Uh, so it's something that you would use to trap something. It's called a snare. All right. Randy, you are still in the lead. According to the book, what are leprechauns in search of when they come out? Triangle gold, diamond presents, circle water, square cheese. What are they looking for when they come out? Hmm, very good. They are looking for gold. They are looking for gold. All 
right, Leslie, you're on the board. Autumn in third place now. Randy, you still have control in first place. We're halfway done. Next question. Tonight's book referred to leprechauns as what? Triangle, funny people? Diamond, tiny elves? Circle, tall people? Or square, the tooth fairy? What did they call the leprechauns? All right, very good. They refer to them as tiny elves. Tiny elves. All right. Randy, you are still in the lead. Yo, May, you are now in second place. All right, question number six. According to the book, what kind of slide should you build to catch a leprechaun? Triangle, glitter, diamond glue, circle rainbow, or square yellow paint? Hmm, your slide. What should you make the slide out of? Oh, very good, very good. You should make the slide out of rainbows. Rainbows, remember? Rainbows, so they can slide right into the gold. All right, let's find out our scores. Randy, you are still in first place. Ansley. You are now in second place, but Autumn, you are not far from first or second place. All right, number seven. When do leprechauns appear on St. Patrick's Day? Triangle in the morning, diamond at night, circle when the sun first comes up, or square in the middle of the day? When do leprechauns appear? Mm. Ooh, very good. They come out at night. That was the diamond. They come out at nighttime. They don't want anyone to, to see them. They're sneaky, sneaky little creatures. All right, Randy, still in first place. All right, next question. According to tradition, what country do leprechauns come from? Triangle, Ireland. Diamond, the United States. Circle, Germany or square Australia? Where do leprechauns come from? Very good, Ireland, Ireland, Ireland. Everyone get that correct. And let's find out and who is in the lead. Only by a difference of 100 points and separates Randy, who is in first place, from Ansley, who is second place. But Delena, you are on the scorecard in third place. You had three correct answers in a row. Way to go, Delena. All right, our next to last question. What materials did the children use in building their leprechaun traps in the book? Triangle glue, diamond rocks, circle glitter, or square, all of the above? What materials did they use? Hmm. What materials? Oh, we had some quick ones to respond on that. It was the square, all of the above. Remember, boys and girls, and uh, sometimes teachers like to trick you on multiple choice questions. Always look for that question that has an answer, all of the above, to make sure that you're not missing out. But just to be sure, let's be a good reader and go back into our text so we can cite our evidence. We've got a box, a cap, glitter, glue, and tape. All right, let's find out. Did that affect the scores? Randy, you still maintain the lead in first place, almost with 4,000 points. Ansley. Last question, question number 10. According to the book, what happens if you catch a leprechaun? Is it triangle, he'll grant you a wish? Diamond, he'll do your homework? Circle, he'll be your friend forever? Or square, he'll disappear? Ah, that 
was a tricky one. The correct answer was triangle. He'll grant you a wish. All right, let's find out. And in third place, we have Delana. Way to go, Delana. In second place, and I think you know who it is. It's Randy. Congratulations. And I will have a special prize for Randy. Way to go, Randy. Ansley, Delana, thank you, boys and girls, parents, for participating uh, in our assessment activity. So as we bring our learn uh, component uh, to a close, we have one final activity to do before we move on, and that is tonight's challenge. So what I want you to do tonight, actually, is to think back to our book from last night, which was, again, If I Built a House. Remember the main character? What was his name? What was his name? Jack, that's right. And, and remember, Jack had some cool places in his house that he wanted to build. Remember the kitchen? If he could make his own house. Remember his bedroom? That's my favorite with the trampoline and the big giant pit of balls to jump into. But what about that bathroom? Oh my goodness. I wonder if you could build your own room would you design so differently from what you have now in your current house? Maybe it's going to be a brand new addition like Jack did. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about what is that room in the house or the entire house that you want to design to be your special house? Is it gonna have cool robots in the kitchen like Jack did to serve any kind of food that you wanted? Remember his favorite food was spaghetti. Do you want something special in the bathroom to clean you automatically? So that is tonight's challenge. So what I want you to do is you should have your markers. Remember that's one of our materials for tonight. And on your paper that you have, I want you to take just a moment to sketch out what your room or house is going to be like. What is so special about your room or your house? And I'm actually going to do this activity with you because I want you to do it while I am doing it as well. So on your paper, you're going to take just a moment to sketch out your house or the room of the future that you want to build. So take just a moment to do that. For me, boys and girls, I am going to focus on one room in my house of the future. And it is going to be the kitchen. I like to eat, boys and girls. Do you like to eat? I sure do like to eat. And I'm trying not to eat so much uh, because I'm still trying to lose weight. I've been doing well, but I want to be really healthy. But I am going to build something special in my kitchen. So in my kitchen that I am drawing out of the future, I want to be just like Jack, and I want to have automatic robots that make something for me. But unlike Jack, I don't want my robot to just make an item for me. I want them to make it, and I want the robot to bring it to me in my bed when I wake up first thing in the morning. And to be more specific, I want my robot to make coffee, Starbucks, my special drink from Starbucks. That is what my house of the future will have in it, a robot that makes special Starbucks drinks for me.
And remember, it's going to bring it to me. So keep working on yours because I want to see yours in just a moment. What will your house have? If you're like me, boys and girls, I'm not really... I can get by. I'm almost done. Are you? All right, I'm ready to share. So here is my kitchen. And you see that I have three robots in my kitchen. I have a robot to prepare. I have another robot who actually makes my coffee drink. And my last robot is going to bring it out of the kitchen into my bedroom because I want it when I wake up first thing in the morning. So you'll see that my first robot, I was really specific in my solution that I have designed here that it has the special um, uh, materials. Coffee. And it has the little latch on there that you see at Starbucks that they have to push up and down to make it hot. So I was very specific in my drawing. What about your drawing? Is it going to be something different than Jack's drawing? Are you getting some ideas from Jack and the house that he built? So my challenge to you tonight is to finish up your uh, solution roadmap, your uh, blueprint that you just drew. You may have to finish it in the morning when you wake up or when you have time tomorrow in your day between your lessons. And I then want you to actually build your room or your house. So you have two options. You can actually build just the room or you can build the actual house with multiple rooms just like Jack did. So what I'd like to have is a picture or a video just like we did tonight, last night, um, of your models that illustrate what your model is going to look like. And you can talk through it if someone is willing to video record you. And boys and girls, that is again following our engineering design process. So you will have tomorrow to make your model, to test your model, and to reflect and redesign, if necessary, your model to make it the perfect house model. Feel free to send me those pictures, those videos, um, and we will find out who has a really good house model. So, as we get ready for our final part of tonight's read aloud, we are now in the land component of our lesson. We're going to find out who won last night's design challenge. So, who got the most votes? Who got the most votes? Was it Michelle? Was it Michael? Was it Olivia? Was it Emma Kate? Was it Brandon? Was it Anthony? Was it Carisi? Or was it Cameron? Hmm. So I have been following the votes as they have come in, and it looks like <clears throat> we have a tie between two individuals. Reese, Michelle, and Emma Kate. Michelle, Emma Kate, and Carisi. So those are our top vote getters, but boys and girls, everyone is a winner. I will be following up uh, with you. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And I want you to use all of your creativity tonight as you start to work on your model that you're going to build. 
So as we enter our final few moments together, we want to take just a moment to reflect on our day together. Uh, this is our third day of no school. And so boys and girls, um, I hope that you did all of your work that you were supposed to do today on your Google Classroom uh, or uh, on your packets. Uh, but before you go and brush your teeth and you get ready for bedtime, let's take a moment uh, to reflect on your day together. So again, remember this is uh, an activity that we are doing to engage both the parent uh, and the child. Uh, so this is meant for you to share out with your scholar um, and listen. Uh, so question number one, question number one, what was the best part about your day? I want you to tell your parent or your older sibling or your fuzzy friend, what was the best part about your day? What was the best part? For me, boys and girls, the best part about my day was that Starbucks was still open. So I was very excited about that uh, and getting that as part of my lunch today. What was the best part about your day? Number two, what was the least favorite part about your day? The least favorite part. Hmm, the least favorite part. Least favorite part for me, boys and girls, was that I had trouble getting on the internet several times throughout the day. That was the least favorite part about my day. What was the least favorite part about your day? Question number three. If you could go back and change one thing about today, what would you change? What would you change? Hmm. Well, one thing that I would change is that I would have gotten up earlier this morning and enough time to have breakfast. I did not have time for breakfast this morning. Boys and girls, it is really important that you eat breakfast in the morning and that you get uh, something in your stomach to make sure you're ready to take on the day. That's one thing I would go back and change. What about you? Number four, our last question, what do you hope is going to happen tomorrow? What do you hope is going to happen tomorrow? Tell your parent or your neighbor or your fuzzy friend, what do you hope is going to happen tomorrow? Mm, one thing I hope is going to happen tomorrow is that I get the opportunity to look at great solutions and hopefully we'll get some videos and, and pictures of your house models. That's one thing that I hope is going to happen tomorrow. So boys and girls, as we end our land uh, component of tonight's Read Aloud and as we close up, remember, I want you to be somebody, be somebody more, and remember if no one has told you that they love you today, Dr. Ivy is telling you that he loves you and he loves you very much. So remember in all that you do, make sure that you are spreading kindness to others around you. So tune in tomorrow for our next Read Aloud and hope to see you then. Have a good night, everybody.